Hmm. Now there's this thing. The log sauna. Need to do some uh, maintenance. And I thought, why not do a video about it? On most of my videos, I do all the work alone. But this time, I'm gonna share that work out. Just a tiny bit. I'm gonna keep most of the work to myself though. So about this log sauna quickly. I did make a recap video how I renovated this log sauna, which can be found up on this corner. Also, I will post it down in the description if you're interested how this building got renovated. About eight years ago, this building looked like this. So the goal for this video is to kind of maintain the building a bit. Even after you finish a building, you still need to maintain it. At least once a year would be great. So I'm gonna set out the goals for this video. First things first, the decking needs to be cleaned up and then oiled. The second thing that needs to be done are the logs. Actually, I have done a very good job at maintaining the logs. So on the logs, I have currently three goats of oil. And this year it's gonna get its fourth goat. Over the years, the oil has kind of crystallized it. So that leaves a very protective surface to ensure that no bugs or anything find it a good idea to eat these logs. The third thing that needs to be done is this sign. So it's supposed to say sauna on it, but with years it has kind of diluted or disappeared. And the fourth and the most hard part will be cleaning the roof. So yeah, that's gonna be on my to-do list. Definitely not gonna tell my mom to go clean the roof. That would be weird. So I'm gonna use this stuff to oil both the turrets and all the logs, including the upper area. So this thing is called dark tar oil. It's a mixture of... Oh, we got English here as well. That's convenient. For protection and decorative furnish of external wooden surfaces. So I've used this stuff for years and I think it lasts the longest where the sun is involved. So you can see that the sun kind of makes the decking boards grayish. And I believe that thing lasts for about two years before the decking turns gray again. On this deck, I use a special decking oil. And the thing did not even last a year before it just turned gray and ugly. So let's just kind of plow through this part. And let's start off with the deck.
There we go. Absolutely love it. Also, the decking looks a lot nicer now. Anyway, next job that I need to do, clean the roof. So you can see that the side tiles are cleaner than the main tiles. That's because I added the side tiles like six years later. So it kind of looks weird now and I want to get the main tiles cleaned as well. There are different products that I could use here. Both go in a pressure sprayer. You would spray the stuff on the tiles, wait a couple of hours and pressure wash it off. That's option number one. Option number two would be that you spray that crap on the tiles and wait about three or four weeks for the rain to wash it off instead. I don't have time nor the patience to wait four weeks. So I'm going to go with the first option. But before I clean the roof, I need to fix something that I did all those years ago. Uh, the problem is right in front of you guys. Can you notice it? I'm going to give you a hint. It has something to do with the... Uh, oh, there we got those things. Huh. Why do I keep forgetting stuff? Oh, yeah. Rain cutters. So the problem is uh, that they are too high. So you can see that uh, they are higher than the first layer of uh, tile. I mean, normally it's not a problem, but... Uh, if you get tons of snow on top of this roof during the winter time and once it starts to melt away suddenly that uh, snow mass can slip off the roof tiles it will crash on the deck which is don't care but but as it slides down the roof and this uh, ring cutter is higher than the first tile firstly it will crash into the cutter and try to like bend it downwards like this i mean on the front of the building it hasn't done really no damage so far but on the back it has bent the rain gutter pretty badly down so before i clean the roof i'm gonna take the rain gutters a bit more down and that should fix the issue Somewhere here would be fine. For once, not being in level is completely fine. So the thing is out of level that way, which is exactly what I need right now. So the water will flow nicely that way. I mean, this should do something useful. So in theory, if I bore this here, then I should get about the same amount from here. 
That would be the case if this cutter is nicely installed. So this seems about right. Okay, I guess this uh, installation or reinstallation went pretty successfully. At least now when the snow slips from the roof, it will nicely just miss the gutter. Now I need to do a copy paste on this side. So if nothing interesting happens, let's just, uh, let's just skip this part. Oh, never mind. Already finished. Thirsty little boy. Hmm. Seems about right. Hmm. Teho pesu. Valmistajan hiväksiemä. Biohajova. I don't know guys. I smell Finnish. Dude, everything is in Finnish. Technically by law you're not allowed to sell anything that has no Estonian description. I would understand if uh, there's no Estonian instructions, but not even in English. That's kind of weird. Sequoita von litra pesuainetta viis litran vetta. Well, luckily Estonian and Finnish language are pretty similar. So I would guess one liter of this thing and five liters of water five so five to one would be the mix ratio fees valmista ilosta kolmkymment litra nitoisu noin one seven five square meters so this entire thing should give me one seventy five square meters of cleaning area uh, what else can I understand from here? Keitto, ohje. Kastele pesta alu vedella. Leivat pe leivetä pesu lois ma malapu. What? Don't even know what that is. Poista pahin kasotta ja lika harja malla. Anava kulta noin. 20 minutia. Only thing I understood was the 20 minute thing. If I were to guess, I need to spray it on, wait 20 minutes, and then pressure wash it. Okay, let's stop wasting time trying to read this. Before I use it on the sauna, I'm gonna test it out on this uh, log outhouse thing. The roof here is also pretty messed up with stuff except the sides and top which I installed last year so between this tile and this tile there is a gap of about seven years
Okay, well, let's wait 10 minutes. I mean, 20 minutes and see if this thing works. Seems to be working. Wish I had a better pressure washer though. Wait a minute. I actually do have a better pressure washer. Why ain't I using that one? Anything that has a premium plus or pro written on it, then that thing should be pretty good. This thing even has uh, heads on display. Not really sure what this does though. Well, do something. This thing clearly doesn't work. Definitely got power there. Oh. Is that it? Whatever. Why are you slowing down? This thing is clearly broken. Did I hurt your feelings? Okay, you're not broken. Seven years old, $60 pressure washer. Saves the day. Saves the day yet again. Who didn't see that coming? I did not see that coming. It definitely looks a lot better than uh, this side. Okay, I'm just gonna plow forward from here. For the sauna, I'm gonna try to get the bigger washer in working condition. Washing that roof with this tiny piece of crap is gonna take forever. But if I can get it working, then I have no other option right now. So yeah.
I mean, just check the difference. That's a huge difference. Okay, well, one more side to do and then I'm pretty much finished with this building. Kinda losing sun there though, have to hurry up. Oh yeah, definitely better than it was, but it's not perfect. You can see that one dial that kind of is showing out. That dial was broken and I replaced it last year. So yeah, it's not perfect, but still definitely better. Next year though, I'm thinking I'm gonna try the more expensive cleaning chemical. With that, I would only need to spray it on the roof and wait for rain to do its job. But considering I need to do this once every 10 years, then you will probably not see a roof cleaning video from me in a while. Getting kinda late. I'm gonna wrap this up tomorrow. Anyway guys, before I end this video, I want to talk about gardening. So I don't really know much of anything about gardening. Plants, flowers. Heck, I don't really know about anything that is green and growing out of the ground. But the women of the household, especially my mother, have contributed years of their time on building different gardens, also the upkeep of said gardens, planting new species of plants and flowers all over the place. They have done such an amazing job building this gardens so I want to take this opportunity to showcase some of their work to you. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of spots that have been transferred from plain and boring to not so plain and boring. First off this area here. So this spot was just a boring hillside. Maybe I can pull up some images for you here to compare. So here you can see pretty pointless hill side and it now looks like this this rock by the way my rock 
I even got a video how I got that rock here. If you're interested, here's the link to that. So this small boulder wall is done by my mother and her sister. And personally, I think this area has been transferred into a really nice garden. Yeah. And then we got this thing here. Fits this spot very well. Ew, apples. These are actually really sweet. Huh. What about this one? Amazing. Then we got these tiny apples. These are actually quite sour. More apple trees. Hmm. All the berries are gone. How did that happen? We got some stuff here. That's actually pretty good. Crap. Didn't shouldn't have done that. All the apple trees, berry bushes, everything are also maintained by the women of the household. I wouldn't have any time to work on the cabin if I had to do all of that as well. So I'm really glad that I'm not doing all the work alone. More apple trees, some uh, this stuff, some strawberries. Wait a minute, these are not strawberries. These are, these are raspberries. Strawberries are here, but there are no fruits here right now. That's because I ate them all. We got some strawberries here. These are like wild strawberries. Holy crap. For a wild strawberry, this is freaking huge. Looks great though. <laughs> One heck of a wild strawberry. There's a bunch of different crap on this field. I can't even pronounce all of them. But we got some potatoes, carrots, some red stuff, mm, onions, garlic, pickles, cucumbers, not really sure what's the difference. Then uh, this stuff, giant ass pumpkins, watermelons, more watermelons, paprikas. So these are, so these are pretty good. What the hell were they called? Vineyard or wine berries? <laughs> I have no idea. You, you guys probably know more than me. More paprikas or maybe these are... No. These are tomatoes. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. I think these are cucumbers. Yeah, cucumbers. More tomatoes, more tomatoes, more tomatoes. So basically, bunch of stuff here. So yeah, this whole field area, filled with bunch of food stuff. I mean, about seven years ago, this field was just empty. Only a lonely Estonian flag was sitting here. Then these two were like, challenge accepted, bro. I got this rented a huge John Deere to plow the field and slowly but maturely it evolved. Planted the raspberries, strawberries and it pretty much continued on from there. And I have done absolutely nothing on this area. All the credit goes to the women of the household. I mean, this entire hillside has been filled with different fruit trees. None of them, though, have any fruit on them. I'm thinking the soil here is just too dry. Kinda tempting, but definitely not gonna eat that. Not even sure what this crap is. This looks pretty cool, though, but it's not edible. We've got plants all over the garden area. Plants and flowers really light up the space. Huh, 
we got more apple trees. I had no idea this was an apple tree. I was pretty sure it's just a plain stupid tree. But apparently it's just a plain stupid apple tree. It's gonna take some time before they're ready. So there is one more garden that I want to show you guys before I end this video. And this thing is huge. Huge. So this thing was designed and built over an existing building. And it's called like a rock or boulder garden. Because there are a bunch of rocks and boulders all over the place. So this garden area has been designed and built for years now. And it has taken a while for it to get this far. At first the thing literally looked like a giant stupid pile of rocks and weed. It had no meaning at all, it was covered in stinging herbs. And you really didn't want to spend any time near it. Slowly but maturely helping hands arrived here and there. And it started taking shape very nicely. So these two here are the main contractors on this rock garden build. And they have done a very amazing job at it. I built this village swing in front of the rock garden for some uh, unknown reasons. Maybe it's just to catch these few pictures. I think they have done a really good job here because this just looks amazing all over the place. You know, it takes really long time to ensure proper upkeep for this type of garden. And I think they have done a really good job here. Yeah. So if you're wondering why there is so massive amounts of boulders here, I'm pretty sure some of you have guessed it already. So currently we have one, two, three, four, five buildings on the property. Well, six if you count the wood fire shed as well. But about 50 years ago, there was seven buildings on the property. And one of them was here on this spot. It extended from this point from all the way against that building. So there was just a small gap between the two here. And apparently there was also an outhouse between the gap. So this building was too rotten out to be restored and it was just demolished. All the boulders of that building was just bulldozed here. There was just a massive hump on this spot. And during that time it has been turned into this wonderful garden. Or as we'd like to say, a boulder garden. This wasn't, by the way, the only building that has been removed from the property. Just behind those trees, there was another massive farmhouse. I was told it was exactly the same as that building there. But that was about 60 years ago and uh, sadly it burned down. But anyway guys, that's about it. I wanted to show these garden areas for you. And basically I give credit where credit is due. Because I don't work on any of the plants stuff on this property but yet again the landscaping work is very well done so yeah give credit where credit is due let's wrap up this video now i think the exterior maintenance came out pretty well and overall i'm pretty happy how it has a new fresh image you know i love building stuff but i also have to keep in mind the maintenance and like I said, this building is kind of special to me because it was the first building I renovated on the property. So yeah. Hopefully it will last for many, many more years. Oh boy. It's been about three weeks now and the oil has partly not fully soaked in yet. And the logs were dry when I did the oiling job. I think the case here is that because this is the fourth layer of oil I put on these logs, the oil really never goes anywhere, it stays in the wood. So the first layer formed a seal, the second, third and fourth layer 
all improved that seal and uh, it doesn't really want to take up any more oil I mean that's my theory at least it should dry up eventually probably in months times but yeah I think the exterior of this building especially the locks are pretty well taken care of I absolutely love the dark color it has but anyway guys here's me signing off now as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. You know, this word is very similar in English and Estonian. I think in English it's sauna, but believe it or not, sauna is actually a word in Estonian as well. So basically sauna in Estonia is a short version of let's go to sauna. So in Estonian it's saun, in English sauna, and that in Estonian is let's go sauna. I have no idea if that made any sense at all. By the way this board was made by my mother. She definitely has some type of hidden talent when it comes to artwork. So she has actually done art in her past, some amazing pictures that she has drawn up and I think there is quite a bit of artist in her. So yeah guys, if you got some nice words for her please post them down in the comments. I will make sure to do a direct translate for her. I think she would be super happy to read anything good.